Hi, I'm Melanie and you're watching Yarn Journeys. If you are a returning viewer to my channel, welcome back. And if this is the first time that you've watched one of my videos, I am so glad you found me. So today is the first Sunday in October and it's the very beginning of fall. And to knitters, two important things happen in fall. Uh, first of all, it's sweater weather. Well, you know what? At least the weather's turned. Oh, sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Oh, God, I win. Finally, sweater, sweater weather. weather. And, of course, I'm, I'm not actually wearing one of my hand-knit sweaters. Uh, this being the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, and I'm indoors. It's not yet that cold. <laughs> so... I didn't want to sit here and melt <laughs> as I was filming in one of my heavy hand knit sweaters. But I am wearing one of my hand knit shawls. Uh, this is my Tenderly. Uh, the pattern is by knitting designer D. O'Keefe. The yarn is Nerd Strings Superwash Merino DK in the colorway Hot Damn. When I was at Fiberspace last summer and I, I saw this uh, beautiful fiery peachy pink and then it had the colorway name uh, Hot Damn, I was like, I I'm going to get that and I'm going to figure out something to do with it. So I enjoy wearing it. But fall also is fiber festival time. And in today's episode, I am going to take you with me to the Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival that was held last weekend, uh, the last weekend in September in Berryville, Virginia. I'm going to take you with me around to some of my favorite booths and vendors I saw at the festival, and then I'm going to show you what I brought home with me. The Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival was held this last weekend in September in Berryville, Virginia, which is about an hour and 15 minutes west by car from the Washington DC area. There were about 125 or so vendors uh, who were showing their wares throughout the fairgrounds, either in barns or buildings or in booths outside. Let me take you through the festival and I'll show you some of the favorite things that I saw. Saturday featured gorgeous weather at the Fiber Festival, which was great for all the vendors that were placed outside. Yarn Hero was one of my favorite discoveries with gorgeous yarns that reminded me of the famous Spin Cycle brand. Companion Fiber had enticing hand-dyed fiber for sale. Here is Hundred Ravens Yarn Petting Zoo, where you can explore the different qualities of their yarn bases. I so much enjoyed seeing all the undyed, unspun fiber that was available. Of course, there was a fleece sale for adventurous spinners who enjoy processing their own wool before they spin. It was fun to learn more about the fibers by touching them and exploring all the different breeds. This fleece for sale even had a picture of the specific sheep from which it came. This button seller had an extensive collection of vintage buttons. I was thrilled to see Solitude Wool there, who are famous for their heritage breed fibers and yarns. The Spanish Peacock had handmade spindles and fiber tools for sale. And the Fiberist's hand-dyed yarn collections was 
full of gorgeous, eye-popping, jewel-like colors. And they had many a luxury yarns, including this one, which was in part made with bison fiber. More hand-dyed yarn candy was on display at 29 Bridges. Just look at those gorgeous hues. I found the rovings for sale at Angel Locks Fiberworks. So enticing. They're designed to give you a beautiful gradient like yarn when you spin them. The dyer at Yarn Over Floyd only uses natural substances for an amazing, beautiful hand dyed effect. I loved hanging out in Simple Hill Farms booth with their hand dyed merino. It was like being in a color wheel. One of my favorite things to do at a fiber festival is of course to hang out with the fiber animals. And they had some Angora goats on display, which were just absolutely adorable. alpacas were just so cute with their big eyes. And there were even angora rabbits. And I even watched some of the judging of the Pygora goats, which is not something you get to see every day. One of the best things I did at the festival was to take a class with knitting maven Jen Perocini. And Jen, I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. Forgive me if I didn't quite get that right. Um, I will link to Jen's uh, website and information in the description below. Uh, Jen taught a class on finishing your knits more professionally. So she was showing us various uh, techniques and tricks uh, to make your knits look a bit more polished and like you want them to. In teaching us, she had us do uh, a swatch. And we started with doing a tubular cast on. Now I haven't yet had the opportunity to work a tubular cast on, but I've been hearing about it a lot from Andrea Maury on her video channel. So I was really glad to learn how to do it. And I have to say, I'm a convert. It indeed does look nice and neat and it, it's it's stretchy and it doesn't have that hard edge that sometimes the long tail cast on can have so thanks jen for showing me how to do that uh, she also gave us techniques for making uh, a collar uh, hold its shape uh, mainly through cleverly working increases and decreases through the ribbing and uh, frankly for me and some of my hand knits uh, collars that don't hold their shape, well, uh, that's a thing <laughs> that I am glad to have uh, some cures for. We also learned how to better install a zipper. Uh, mainly, the big clue is not to use a sewing machine and to do it by hand. If you run into Jen in a fiber festival or in another venue where she might be teaching a class, 
highly recommend you take it. I learned a lot. Are you going to a fiber festival this fall? Uh, there's quite a bunch. I mean, Rhinebeck is the big one. Uh, I think I think Vermont Fiber Festival is uh, this weekend as a number of others. Uh, I'd love to hear what you're doing and what your experiences are. Let me know in the comments down below. So of course you might be curious about uh, what I brought back with me because there are lots of goodies. So here, I'm going to take you through it. The smallest purchase I made was of a wooden Diz. Uh, as a new spinner, I'm beginning to learn some techniques for fiber prep and a Diz is a little tool that you use to turn a bat or carded fiber into roving you can spin. Uh, so this one is a beautiful wood one um, from a vendor called Turnstiles. I also had some fun at the Vintage Button Cellar. Uh, one of my goals for my project queue this year is to knit some lighter weight sweaters, uh, specifically cardigans. So I got some buttons to help inspire me. Uh, these are all vintage buttons and um, I'm really excited about these red ones. I got some new spinning fiber as well. Uh, Green Goat Farm had a bunch of fiber, just lots and lots of fiber, uh, that their colorways were named after superheroes and Marvel movies and sci-fi and fantasy TV series. So these are uh, two Rambouillet hand-dyed braids uh, that were called Witcher after the Netflix TV series. Um, they were sold as a plying pair uh, and I've never spun Rambouillet so I am excited to try some new fiber. Love these purples. As I showed you earlier, Angel Locks Fiber Works had some roving that was just so colorful and enticing. Uh, she also had there some odds and ends that she'd made into roving. So this is roving made in the same formulation, kind of like a, a center pull ball. So you start from what's in the center and it kind of just drafts out as you spin it. Uh, this is a mixture of alpaca and merino and Shetland and whatever came from the other rovings. And I think there's also some sparkle in here. I'm really excited to play with this. It's, it's very soft and squishy. And of course, there was some lovely yarn for sale from Simple Hill Farm, which is a merino sheep farm in central Virginia in the Shenandoah Valley. Uh, I got these two naturally dyed skeins of merino DK. I loved the Simple Hill Farm booth. You know, all of those yarn vendors at fiber festivals, they're just a riot of color with all these skeins and brightly colored, variegated, speckled, splotched, just, it, there's a lot to look at and it can get so very stimulating. But the Simple Hill Farm Merino was arranged in the color wheel and because they're made with natural dyes and also many of the skeins were over dyed on uh, browner shades of merino fleece there was this sort of muted calm feel in there so as soon as i entered the booth of simple hill farm i got this restful feeling just 
by uh, being in a place where the skeins were so artfully and restfully arranged in order. I loved it. So uh, the uh, two colorways I got were uh, this uh, purple one, which is dyed with matter and indigo. It's called Plum Purple. And uh, this one is Bluestone Blue, uh, which is indigo. And, and I just love the, the depth of color that comes from the over dye of the indigo with the uh, browner shade of merino fleece and also the, the fleece i mean it is merino so it's soft but you can um you can almost sense that there's still a little bit of lanolin left in the wool i, I can't wait to start playing with these beautiful skeins what else Yarn over Floyd is uh, another natural dyer based in uh, the Shenandoah Valley in central Virginia. I, well, in the town of Floyd. And uh, this is fingering weight yarn. Uh, it is a combination of merino and nylon and it is dyed with lac and marigold and i am such a sucker for pink and sort of peachy tones so pretty from flying goat farm uh, which is based outside of frederick maryland i got some zephyr et in this lovely apple green color and it's a bit shiny uh, this is sport weight and it is surrey alpaca or baby alpaca uh, silk and cashmere oh it's so lovely and squishy soft uh, the owner of flying goat farms said that this is like knitting with kittens and I don't doubt it. Avalon Springs Farms, which is also in the central Maryland area, uh, not far from Frederick, was also at the fair. Um, I visited them in August uh, when, they're, when they had an open day for their studio. And I want to share with you what I got there. Um, this is their uh, glass aisle yarn, which is a blend of cultivated silk and merino. Uh, this colorway is called Spiritual Journey, and this colorway is called uh, The Heart and the Harp. Uh, the label says it's Aaron weight, uh, but it actually, to me, this this looks like it might be more of a worsted weight and could even be substituted for DK. I am going to swatch and see what it looks like, uh, but it has such beautiful drape and sheen, and I love the variegated colors. I see a lovely shawl or cowl in my future with this. And then, uh, the last big purchase I made at the festival uh, was from Yarn Hero. Uh, I have been a huge fan of Olga Jazzy, uh, as she's known on Ravelry, and uh, I've been eyeing making her plus shawl ever since I saw the sample at Fiber Space uh, earlier this summer. Uh, so uh, Yarn Hero uh, had their Merge yarn base, which is sport weight, and um, this is non-superwash merino. Uh, and just look at those colors. It's, got, it's mostly sort of browns and taupes, but it's got some 
lavender uh, shot through and a little bit of blue. So that's gonna be the main color. And then my contrast color is gonna be this sort of peachy orange, which is the main tone, but it's got some of that brown and lavender shot through it. So I think that this is going to be super pretty together. And now it's time for some show and tell. So I finished a few things uh, since I last did a big episode. Uh, first, of course, is my Hermione's Everyday Socks uh, that I knit in Mama Jess Knits yarn. I'm very happy with how they came out. You know, um, I mentioned in my last video that I knit one with my Haya Haya flyers and I was going to try knitting the other one with my Chiagu shorties. Uh, well, I can tell you that the Chiagu shorties, making socks with those, made my hands cramp up. It was just trying to hold two teeny weeny needles on such a small circumference uh, wire just wasn't working for me. So I went back to my Haya Haya flyers. Um, I've actually already worn them and uh, washed them and um, even put them in the dryer. <gasps> oh no, not the dryer. Um, couple things. I am a looser knitter. So even using size one needles, um, my gauge on light fingering socks tends to make a looser sock. So putting them in the dryer kind of helps uh, the fabric uh, tighten up a little bit. But also my feeling is that if I'm going to knit socks and wear them on my feet, um, and it's also superwash made with nylon. Uh, it's okay. I, I need to be able to throw them in the washer and put them in the dryer, and and I'm fine if you know they change a little bit. I'm knitting socks all the time. I'll I'll just I'll just make more. You know, if you're a sock knitter, what's your theory on knitting with superwash fingering? Uh, do you put them in the washer and dryer? Uh, I know for some people putting your wool in, in the dryer is a bit of a, a new new, but you know, I'm okay with it. Uh, my other finished object is my uh, Musselberg-ish hat. I call it Musselberg-ish uh, because I actually ran out of my homespun targi uh, and so it's not as long <laughs> um, or it's not as big as it should be i can't really turn up the brim like like you can if it's a, a proper musselberg but for those of you who are not familiar with isolda teague's uh, musselberg hat it, it's actually knit um, like a big tube uh, and with two finished ends. One end is a uh, pinhole cast on and the other end is just, you know, you decrease and finish it like most hats. Uh, and then you turn one side in to the other and it, it, makes, it makes your hat. Uh, I am, I love this hat. The double layer makes it so warm and the targi hand spun stripes uh, came out beautifully. So this is my first finished object made with my own hand spun yarn and I couldn't be more delighted. So, ah, and one last finished object. And I'm calling this a finished object because it took a fair bit of effort. It was in 2004, I decided that I wanted to make a cardigan by uh, Kim Hargreaves uh, that I 
saw in a Rowan magazine. Uh, and it, the pattern called for Rowan cork. And I, I think it was 12 skeins for the size I wanted to make, 12 skeins of Rowan cork. Well, I never, I never finished that sweater. I did cast on, I think I knit the back and maybe started on one of the fronts. It was, the construction was of course that you um, knit it in pieces and then sewed it up. I didn't get that far. Um, and it sat in a project bag, probably once I stopped knitting on it for, I don't know how many years, a long time. I went through a pretty big hiatus in my knitting, um, maybe from about 2005 to 2011 or so. At some point I got around to frogging it and it was in several balls, <laughs> but that yarn. That yarn was so expensive. I mean, it was a 2004, 12 skeins of Rowan cork. Uh, I, I know that the bill was well over $200. It may have been $250. Uh, the yarn store that I bought it with is bought it from is uh, long since defunct. Over the past couple weeks, I have spent some time unwinding. Uh, those uh, balls of Rowan cork and uh, sort of uh, refreshing that yarn. So, I, cause it's nice yarn. Uh, it's got an interesting construction. So I'll undo one of the skeins. Uh, so it is a chain net construction. So I don't know if you can see it. It's not actually plied. It it's, uh, it's actually, the, the yarn itself looks like a tube made from a mesh of fiber. Uh, the fiber content is uh, merino and polyamide, I believe is the, is the other fiber type that's in there. It's very squishy, uh, very light. Um, I didn't remember from when I was knitting with it before that it, I mean, it, you can see it's quite stretchy. So um, it does stretch somewhat as uh, you're knitting with it. Uh, so I'm excited to have this yarn available to me uh, to play with. It is red, which is of course my favorite color. So I am hoping to, um, you know, look at uh, some raglan sweater designs and, and maybe um, knit a sweater that is either of my own design or an adapted design. Um, but, but now I have several hundred, I think I actually have over a thousand yards of this Rowan cork to play with. Have you ever uh, refreshed some frogged yarn or found something in your deep stash that you uh, pulled back into circulation? Uh, what's your experience been with that? I want to know. Um, oh, and if you're curious about how to refresh a frogged yarn, uh, there's a bunch of YouTube videos out there that actually go into detail about this. But Essentially, what you do is you, you know, if you have a nitty knotty or like a yardstick or something, you can, you, you just make skeins with the yarn and you give it a bath and let it dry. Um, and that uh, brings the yarn back close to its original condition. Those are my finished objects. Let's talk about works in progress. I cast on the Sunday Real Socks by Anna Joanna. Well, I say Anna Joanna because my sister's name is Joanna, but it, it might be Anna Johanna. I know if you know how to pronounce her name correctly, let me know. Uh, they are uh, toe up socks. And I have to say I'm becoming a fan of the toe up sock. Uh, now that I'm more comfortable with uh, the Turkish cast on for the toe, it really does make things uh, simpler. Um, 
The yarn is La Bien Aimee's uh, Super Sock, uh, which is merino light fingering, and the colorway is Lannister, which I'm sure is from the Lannister Red of Game of Thrones fame. I'll be working on these socks in the coming weeks as I travel. More about that later. And I am super excited to say that I have cast on for my weekender sweater with my own hand spun. It is bottom up. And actually, you knit it inside out. So this is the wrong side, which is knit. But what, what will be the side that is outside is the pearl side. Uh, so this is my own Targi hand spun that I started with the Tour de Fleece. I really love how the colorways are coming out. It was a combo spin. It is pink and green pastel, a bit stripey. It, it, I keep on wanting to knit row after row because I keep on getting excited about how the colors are all knitting up. Anyway, I'm at the very beginning. A uh, couple things. So uh, when I knit my swatch, my gauge was way off. So I am a loose knitter to begin with um, and um, uh, this yarn, actually, I was going for worsted, but one of the things about Targi is that when you finish the yarn, it goes poof, it just poofs right up. Uh, and I just didn't um, account for that. Uh, I'm a new spinner and I, well, I learned uh, that next time I make uh, something with Targi or a similar wool, in finishing the yarn, it's going to poof, and so I should make my singles a little smaller. Uh, but, you know, no harm, no foul. Uh, what I did was I measured my blocked swatch, figured out what uh, reasonable gauge is going to be, and then I redid the sweater math for my own gauge. So I figured out if I was going to keep the gauge for the fabric I like, you know, and I want the measurements to be the same for the size in Andrea's pattern. I just uh, re figured out, you know, how many stitches I should cast on, um, bind off, and so on for the pattern. Uh, um, and I think it is going to be just fine. This pattern, uh, Andrea Marries the Weekender, is really quite uh, simple. Uh, there's no fancy stitches, no color work. It's pretty much straight up stockinette or ribbing uh, most of the way. So I was excited that I had taken that class that included how to do tubular cast on. So when it came time to uh, cast on for the Weekender, the tubular cast on for this one, well, this is a one by one cast on, which is a slightly different than two by two, but I had the general concept and it looks really nice. So those are my works in progress. And I'm excited to tell you that very soon I will be getting on a plane to go on another journey. So there isn't going to be another uh, long episode uh, like this one for uh, two or three weeks. Um, but um, if you want to keep track of where I am and what I'm seeing and all the wooly goodness I am experiencing, um, I uh, will likely be uh, putting up some goodies on in the form of YouTube Reels or uh, some things might be showing up on my Instagram feed. Uh, so uh, I invite you to uh, join me 
on Instagram. I'll put the link to my um, Instagram on, in the show notes and uh, uh, do stay tuned. Um, and then when I come back, uh, I'll be telling you all about what I saw and did in more detail. <sighs> so uh, that is the end of today's episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, going along with me to the Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival. Uh, if you like today's episode, please do be sure to uh, click that thumbs up and uh, give the video a like. And uh, if you want to make sure that you don't miss another episode of Yarn Journeys, uh, please do subscribe uh, because I promise you that more fun and adventures are on the way. Uh, so that's all for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon in my next video.